Imagine a creature where the female gives birth to a baby the same size or even heavier than herself. Now imagine this mother has only nine days to create such a huge baby. And the only way she can generate enough energy to do this is by feeding on protein-rich blood. What animal do you think we are describing? It is the setsi fly. Setsi flies transmit a deadly parasitic disease that can infect and often kill humans and livestock across sub-Saharan Africa if left untreated. We are studying the biology of these flies to understand the best way to control their numbers and ultimately prevent the spread of disease. In this video, we will introduce you to an international team of researchers who have joined forces to understand how the remarkable maternal investment by the fly can influence our understanding of setsi and the diseases they spread. This project kind of came about through my interests in mothers, so my general research is on how mothers affect their offspring and how the interactions between mother and offspring can really shape what happens to those babies when they grow up. It was actually when I was becoming a mother myself and I was on maternity leave and I got chatting to um, an expert on tsetse flies and he explained to me this absolutely fascinating biology about tsetse which made me think they're a really good model for the sorts of things I'm interested in. This is a story about collaboration across countries and scientific disciplines and overcoming obstacles. Well they are exceedingly interesting insects. It produces just one offspring every 10 days. It hatches an egg, the egg stays inside the body of the female and is fed on a special secretion much like milk. So the reproductive system of the tsetse fly is more like a mammal than the ordinary fly. At the end of each pregnancy, the female births a live larva, which burrows into the soil to pupate. After a month, the young adult fly emerges from its cocoon-like case. The young fly's survival is entirely dependent on nutrients provided by its mother until it can take its first blood meal. This exceedingly high degree of maternal provisioning is most unusual in the animal kingdom and can have major consequences for both the setsi and the creatures on which they feed. We're looking at the population dynamics of tsetse flies and their physiology and by a better understanding we think we can improve the effectiveness and cost of control. The major output is how we just want to see, quantify really, what, uh, uh, how the mothers uh, invest their they are fed reserves so the pupa with edge, as in whether the, the young flies, do they produce a big pupa? Uh, the older flies, uh, what is the relation to the investment of the mother to the pupae? Our story begins in a natural setsi habitat near the Komachi Research Station in the Zambezi Valley of Zimbabwe. We want to understand how wild setsi mothers invest resources in their young. For the purpose of this study, we need to trap both the mothers and their babies. It is not possible to use typical setsi traps because these only catch hungry flies attracted to a live animal or the scent of one. However, an ingenious technique pioneered by John Hargrove and colleagues exploits the fly's preference for depositing their babies in warthog burrows during the hottest times of the year. So what I thought was, how can we actually design a something that looks like a warthog burrow. So we can put it wherever we want and will the flies actually uh, put the pupae in those burrows. We use these burrows to catch females at the point they birth a larva and then measure how the amount each female invests in her young varies with her age and her own fat reserves. We can dissect the female fly's abdomen to examine the ovaries and assess how many times she has reproduced, which helps us gauge her age. The length of a fly's wing gives us an indication of fly size, and the extent to which the wing has become tattered provides a further clue of the fly's age. Living in the bush comes at a cost, and the wings carry the signature of this wear and tear. But field work with Setsi cannot answer all the questions we pose. Unfortunately, we cannot closely watch wild flies all the time. At the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, we maintain the largest breeding colony of setsi in the UK. Here, we conduct exciting research with live setsi and challenge mothers fed on different diets to see how they change their investment in their offspring. 
we developed a creative way to link data on mothers and their babies at an individual level, which was not previously possible using the traditional cages for rearing setsy flies in an insectary. We record it 24-7, or every day of the week. That way we can know to the second the timing of the birth. We can check whether if she has aborted, does she continue that nine day cycle and then start another gestation period, or whether she adjusts and starts fresh for that nine day period. Then we can weigh each individual pupa, we can put it into a falcon tube but to emerge, we know the sex of that pupa, we can see the weight, the size, we can also do fat analysis of that pupa as well. So there's a lot of data that we actually can collect from this. In the lab, we feed the flies parasite infected blood and measure how prone individuals are to an infection, depending on characteristics of the fly and their mother. We also build on our field and lab work to explore the broader implications by using mathematical models. Once we've got these results, they can help us question whether our original hypothesis was true, and from this we can help improve our biological knowledge. We can also use this matching from the data to make predictions about what might happen if something changes. We're also trying to understand a bit more about the tsetse fly. And we're trying to make all that story a bit more complicated. And we're just trying to think a bit better about this fly and how much she invests in the offspring, this massive larvae she produces. Modeling results could help inform policy and decision makers on what is the most efficient strategy for disease control. Beyond setsi control, we are also fascinated by how creatures like setsi, with such a bizarre reproductive strategy, could have evolved in the first place. How would nature select for a creature that produces a baby the size of its mother? How does the mother then survive to produce even more enormous babies? Our goal is that this work will not only inform and improve current setsi control methods, but also inspire researchers to address fundamental questions about this intriguing insect that takes maternal care to an extreme.